Hey everyone, welcome back to Inspired By. And why? So we just watched the season finale of Ghosts. So there can be a lot of spoilers here. And I, for one, was just trying to catch up and get excited. And I got pulled into this show that I have not watched in a while that you said you're a big fan of. You say you really like this show. Well, yeah, but I never get to watch it. <laughs> right. We're busy parents of a little one and 830 yeah. is that time where we're hoping he's going to go to sleep. We're trying to help him out. So yeah, but I think it's really well, well written oh, and well yeah. acted. So, yeah. Completely. I mean, the premise is sort of wonderful to having this diversity of characters over time. So they, yeah. as I was mentioning to you, when one of the characters, I think it was Isaac Lanza Huzzah, I just <laughs> love that whenever you can get that. And it just seems so silly and ridiculous. And that's, it's an earned huzzah, like mm -hmm. he would say that. So they have this range of characters who are ghosts and they come from different time periods and different backgrounds and they're sort of finding themselves. And it just seems like it's such a great way to look at adulting as we keep developing and we keep finding ourselves as someone is said one of the characters is saying to Isaac who is having this momentous occasion in his uh development where he's going to marry his partner oh wait but he decides not to and then the one of the other characters says well you know you've been around for hundreds of years but you've only really known yourself who you really are recently mm -hmm. and I just thought how many times do you sort of feel like that as an adult where I've been around for a while but didn't know this about mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful thing to unpack yeah. by letting you have people live out actually lifetimes, even though they're in one consciousness. Yeah. A great yeah. concept. Yeah. Because I think I probably didn't get into it as much because when you play around with supernatural things, it's not something that attracts me a whole lot. Even though I might write fantasy, it's different than playing around with like ghosts and things like that. Uh, fantasy world with magic is a different thing than supernatural with ghosts and demons and things mm -hmm, like that. And I just mm -hmm. tend to shy away from it. But this is done in such a lighthearted way. This is done in a way that hits profound notes. It's not supposed to scare the mess out of you. And I think that maybe that's why I sh I'm scared of cat, y'all. I do not do right. it's not poltergeist. Exactly. It's not exorcist. It's yeah. not supernatural that series. Right, right, There's right. a lot of stuff out there that yeah. really probes into fantasy with supernatural elements. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, but this, I'm like, oh, bring this to me. <laughs> so we can talk a lot, but I wanted to kick it off because this episode has such deep notes. I wanted to kick it off with a deep note that would pull into spirituality. And that is where you come in, Tim. So mm -hmm. let's kick it over to our spiritual connection with this episode. Sure. Um, so I was uh, thinking about forgiveness with this episode, with the wedding being called off. Between um, Isaac Right. who calls it off and Nigel and Nigel right who is the red coat who <laughs> was I guess still sort of talking to Isaac all the way up through the episode oh, are we sure we're going to do this because yeah. I guess Isaac seemed like he had cold feet because sexy what kind of stripper was it was uh, uh, in the mix Australian sexy DJ Australian stripper. DJ sexy Aust first of all Australian DJ stripper <laughs> Whenever you can get all those together. Can you do the Australian accent for us? Oh, yeah. Okay. His parents were from Australia. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know if that means that was good know. or was terrible. No, but you that, can comment that as would, to whether or not you think that no, was good. That was, that was poor. Um, <laughs> You're on the spot, honey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not an accent <laughs> sort of experience for y'all. We're not teaching y'all. Okay, right. sorry. We can cut that. We're not going to cut that. Right. We're not going to cut so, that. Um, <laughs> With down. regards to forgiveness, um, uh, so um, oh, I just lost the news. I think Nigel we should view all shows Nigel. through the Nigel angle. Isaac. I think we should view all shows through the angle of Australian accents, and that should be another. Wow, that's, <laughs> serious that's, that's a whole angle other series. On inspired by and why, or the show could be viewed through the angle inspired of all these by and why. all these accents being done by these folks, yeah. because a lot of them feel like they're authentic. But then there might be some, like with Thor, you're just like, okay, well, he's right, just sort of being right. a little bit silly. But we actually could talk more about the acting and the accent work. Uh, the Australian accent, was it a was it a good authentic accent? Yeah, I didn't even pick up on it. I was having problems hearing this thing because we're blessed in the AC because it's hot, y'all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even hear it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I was, I was trying to figure out whether it was like a really good, you know, like American guy doing a really good Australian accent or was actually... How do we tell? actually an Australian person. How would you tell? There's certain things that people overemphasize when yeah. they're trying to fake it. Yeah. I mean, and then a real Aussie would just be like, you know, 
could die. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it seemed it. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, uh, just just from what I could hear. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. That was excellent, right? Yeah, good on you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was said <it's> sarcastic. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it seemed authentic to me from what little I could hear. Um, so we you know, could but check I'm, that but out. I'm always uh, suspicious, you know, like because a lot of people do a lot of good accents. Oh yeah, know. they get trained by people. Yeah, like Johnny have... Lee Miller, you know, oh, does a man. good American accent and. <laughs> because his family, I mean, you know, his child is American and. His ex-wives are American, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, so yeah. you know, you're yeah, around yeah. people all the time, and True. and he's also just good. I mean, some of these thespians no, are quite good. But for some reason, he doesn't Don't, do the best he was, Scottish he, accent. And there it is. Okay, look, I'm a huge Johnny <laughs> Miller fan. In Train Spotting, you know, he's up against. He's with you and McGregor. You and McGregor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like and my then, Scottish. Right, McGregor. right. So you can, you can you can definitely tell the difference Sorry. in accents. Don't hire like, me for any of the Scottish ones. Yeah. So. Sorry. Anyway. You can definitely tell the difference. Well, okay, yeah. look. I never really watched Train Spotting. Right. And when I I just watched a little bit of it. When I've heard Johnny Lee Miller do his accent work, right. It's been outstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The American yeah. accent that he'll yeah. do. Yeah, there's a lot of good good accent work. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he doesn't just like he's even done like southern and I was like, "Oh." Right, right, right. Okay. Right. But it was period southern, or like, so uh, I gave him a little asterisk on that. We're like um uh James Bond guy. Um What you about? Ah, the latest James Bond guy. What's the, I forget his name. Oh, uh, uh, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig, yeah. He did um, Knives Out. Oh, he was so and good. And he did that. a great accent with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, people just lose themselves in characters. That's one of the things I think a lot of actors love to do. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. lose themselves yeah. in character. And one of the things that can help you do that is if you sound so different from yourself. So right, right. latch on to the accent work as a right. way to help transport you, like putting on a costume, mm -hmm. letting yourself get into an accent, yeah, yeah, yeah. adopting a different mannerism or whatever, help you stay in that character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. The accents, <laughs> I literally could not hear the show that well because yeah, we were yeah. blasting yeah, the character. Conditioning, yeah. and so I usually really like it when we you watch could, Aussie you shows. Could, you couldn't hear his accent uh, over his abs, right? His, saw, his abs saw, were so loud. I, I heard those uh, abs. <laughs> yeah, so they loud. Could yeah. Cut the tension with those abs. Uh -huh, <laughs> uh -huh. Well, look. I enjoyed the show of Ghosts, and mm -hmm. I think you were trying to talk about forgiveness, and we we're right. trying to go deep, but. When there's a sexy Australian stripper, who knows where the conversation's going to go. So let's pull it on back to forgiveness. So anyway, so you're, yes. talking so, you're talking about Isaac. You're talking about Nigel. Right. So let's Nigel talk about was, forgiveness. Nigel was um, showing forgiveness toward Isaac for, you know, yeah. completely embarrassing him and, you know. Not staying so a little bit earlier because they were right. having the conversation about the cold feet and they were talking through right. this whole right do you want this stripper guy to right. die so he can be in the afterlife and you can be with him right right all this kind yeah. of like so part of it was just scary scary he stuff. had uh, you know a little bit of that inkling anyway you know sort yeah. of like uh, you know are you really ready for this yeah nigel had suspicions and voiced them as right. you want to do in the loving relationships like what's going on um so yeah so he was um showing a little bit of forgiveness there and um and then right at the end, um, I was noticing uh, Isaac, you know, went down to the basement, and the lady, I, I don't, I don't know. If you the, mean the one that pulls? Yeah, 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 yeah. Patience. Yeah, I, I guess. This new I, I guess they have entity. some some history. I, I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but yeah. it sounded like she. Had been betrayed by him in yeah, some kind of way. Yeah, yeah, So revenge you know, is being had. Right. So that was the Perhaps. opposite I mean, that's, of forgiveness. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. And that's the cliffhanger yeah. that people right. could be buzzing about. Right, right. And certainly, I felt like it was something that I was only not chagrined about because, for one thing, I'm not really keeping up with the show. But the other thing, I sort of read ahead, and I guess the show creators were warning people that there will be some cliffhangers, and right, so brace right. yourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, because a lot of times when I go into a show. I'm frustrated by cliffhangers. I understand they want to get us to come back for the next season, mm -hmm. but I also want to see how people as writers pull things together and give us a resounding, yeah, thank you for sticking through these main themes This is for coming a from a woman who can't watch a movie if she doesn't know the ending. Okay, let's get real, um, y'all. Y'all yeah. don't know that deep, dark secret about me, but <laughs> it is very true. I need to know all the big twists because I really invest in the journeys with these characters 
and I see connection with myself or maybe people that I love in even these if, characters. Even if it's like a, a it doesn't matter. A it could be a serial, G, but like you know, it could, be, it could be a James Bond movie. I'm, She's worried that James Bond is gonna die. I am. You know, like um, no, these people aren't invincible. He doesn't. He doesn't. Except die. they sort of, you know, as written in the yeah, character, they, they are gonna keep uh, saving a lot. But I can't. Like Transformers. <gasps> These are, robots. Are the, are the bad, are the Decepticons going to win? Oh, oh no. Transformers. I must know the end of the movie. Um, no, the good guys are going to win. Okay. And end of story. Okay, so this is yeah. one of the things about tolerance level for risk and stakes going up and up and uh, up for your characters. you got to do it. I have to do it to my characters. But I do care about my characters, and I care about characters of other people, right? That's mm -hmm. why I like great stories. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to go through the ringer, even though... We gotta put them through the ringer so people will want to come back and watch, right. and so we can learn some things about these characters. They mm -hmm. can learn something about themselves. We can make profound statements about forgiveness mm -hmm. and self-discovery, and being interested in family even more so than personal uh, satisfaction. As Pete was at this place in Saint Lucia, where he's with this woman that he's enjoying, and maybe he's going to just no longer be a ghost and be at peace, but he decides to go back with his family. His ghost family. So I was just um, think, I was just thinking I wanted to correct myself because oh. I think in the last James Bond movie actually it's I think it's vague but he it's might die. presumed that he actually dies. See they could keep a double O seven but they don't right, have to keep right, Daniel right. Craig. That's right. So it could be another double O Right, right, right. Okay. So I had to correct uh -oh. myself there. But uh, That's okay because yeah, yeah. We but the, are, pre the premise of the statement yeah, is, the you state know, is yeah, valid. Yeah, yeah. And we are also very open to correction from y'all who are <laughs> deeply interested in and are part of the fandom of right. these things that we are just tangentially connected to and mm -hmm. enjoy. We are inspired by, but sometimes we might not be detailed out and completely informed down to the minutia with things. And i got to admit that with Ghosts. I mean, this is a show that I was coming into because I want to see a range of different storytelling especially with comedy because I'm writing comedy so I wanted to check this out because it does have the layer of humor and then the supernatural mm -hmm. kind of thing that they're playing around with when you break open things that yeah. aren't squarely realistic you give yourself a lot of possibility for humor that people haven't explored so yeah. this is really smart but how do they pull it off and for somebody like me who mm -hmm. hasn't been watching it I could still follow along with what was happening even mm -hmm. though they're giving us something new and mysterious there was enough just consistency internal to their world mm -hmm. and everyone behaving mm -hmm. like this is how this works. Right. There's enough, I guess, of recapping where the woman who can see the ghost has to tell things to her husband who right, can't see right, them anyway. Right, so that right, helps right. for people like myself. That's a cute device. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, totally. So I think we talked a bit about the storytelling and the acting. You got a connection to the spirituality. Now the music, there's one of these characters who has this big, I was a singer type of moment and she does a singing, mm -hmm. had, sings at last. And it was beautiful. Right. It was beautiful. I mean, the, the point at which she sang was not a romantic right. point because right. they didn't quite had a fall the, apart. Uh, the moment, yes, but, no, yeah. it did not, which I guess is one of the humorous things about her. Maybe, right, right, right. maybe that's what happens a lot is she is trying to, be known for the music, but is not appreciated for it. Is that the bit? I have, I have no idea. Alberta? Is her name Alberta? Is I don't know. So y'all can let us know. But <laughs> if, I, I, if I watched it more, I would know. But... I appreciated the moment, the musical oh, yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, yeah. Show, the show is really well done. Yeah. Um, the pacing I, I is I, great. I wish I had a chance to watch it more. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... So I think for us, in appreciating a show where we're not keeping up with it totally, hats off to the performers, mm -hmm. hats off to the writers for welcoming people in and giving us entertainment, even if we're not steeped in the lore. Mm -hmm. And then it also is this great thing as a screenwriter for me to see there's something for the people who've been waiting for these relationships to pay off and there's, there's something for people who are casually bopping through just to see good writing and see mm -hmm. what's out there. and. I think we could uh, want to maybe check it out in the future. Y'all let us know if you want us to check it out more deeply, especially if you have certain themes you think would be interesting for us to dig into. If you have certain episodes that you think would be interested in, in terms of the screenwriting, in terms of spiritual connection, 
please let us know because yeah. it's a good show and we can check some of these things out in the future. So with Inspired by and Why, it's a new channel. Comment, like, and subscribe. But go ahead and comment and let us know what you want us to talk about in the future. We're going to be looking into other things that are interesting to me as a screenwriter, as an actor, as a musician, doing things for film and TV. Interesting to Tim as someone who's finding great messages to inspire us all to be more spiritually grounded. But you can also have us just talk about acting. Since I'm sure you want Tim to or, or strippers. Oh yeah, strippers. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we could talk. There could be a whole stripper series, y'all. Mm -hmm. Make it rain. Make it rain. <laughs> All right, y'all. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.